Summer may be coming to an end, but that doesn't mean the fun in the sun has to stop. Art and music lovers, wine enthusiasts, families, neighbors, and friends have converged on Castro Street today for a festival like no other. Welcome to KMBT's live coverage of the 39th annual Mount View Art and Wine Festival. Hello everyone, good afternoon. I'm Kirsten Fairchild alongside Jim Too. Thank you so much for joining us. We're broadcasting live here at the KMT, KMBT booth on the corner of Castro and Church Street, Mount View. Today is the final day of this two-day event, which features more than 600 artists displaying their work. Jim, an appreciation of art is only one of many reasons to head on down to Castro Street today. Yep, thanks, Kirsten. You're right. It's a, uh, it's a. Uh, in Mountain View's throwing a party, and everyone's invited. There are plenty of broad, broad interest things to do. Plenty of live entertainment, and for all you people like me, who's normally a couch potato watching football on a Sunday afternoon, Xfinity ha is broadcasting NFL football here at this, here, here, here at the Art and Wine Festival. So stop by and grab some food. Oh, a lot of food vendors here too. So food for every type of taste and taste and preference and cuisine from all over the world. We'll be on the air for two hours, but the festival will go on for hours after that. If you're enjoying what you're seeing today, come on down here to Castor Street in Mount View. For our broadcast today, Jim, we're going to bring a little bit of flavor in every way from this festival, and, and including having the chance to showcase some of the best student athletes and coaches from Los Altos, Mount View, and St. Francis High Schools. We'll be hearing from them as well as from the mayor and from folks from the Chamber of Commerce and the KMVT Board of Directors. It's really going to be a special day. Oh yeah, yeah. For, all, for all aspects of the Mountain View community gets to put on, you know, dress up and put on their best face for you. So come on down and see, see what Mountain View has to offer and the Bay Area in general. And it's a special day for us here at KMBT. We had the christening of our production truck, truck revamped today. And here at the KMBT booth, you mentioned NFL football. We've got a replay of Sarah St. Francis football at our booth. But it's just not about the football today. It's about art. Uh, so many different kinds of art, so many different kinds of music. Wine is being poured, beer is being poured, fun is being had, and a great day, a great place for the children. Uh, you're going to be over at our production truck later on in the broadcast, and there are so many fun activities. I want to see you up on that mountain climbing wall. Oh, I don't know. Uh, you know, I do have a fear of heights, but I will be checking out the checking out the new pimp that ride. There are five and six-year-olds up on that wall, mister. Yeah, but see, they, they don't have the, they only have the experience of age and realize how fun and crazy it is, but that's the beauty of youth. You can do crazy things. Everything will heal when you're young. Stitches, yeah. I'm sure it's a very, very safe environment. So please bring your children on down. This fundraiser, this festival, began in 1971. It, it is the largest fundraiser for the Mountain View Chamber of Commerce. So coming down and, and purchasing goods, enjoying food, getting getting your lunch or dinner in, not only uh, feeds your appetite, it's a great way to contribute to programs that make this city as special as it is. Yeah, so come on down, bring your friends, meet your neighbors, meet complete strangers. It's a, it's a beautiful day here in Mountain View on a Sunday afternoon. Very friendly folks down here, and it's a, a chance also to, to talk to jewelry designers, to talk to artists, to talk to musicians. We have a, a harpist nearby that I'm sure we'll hear playing throughout the broadcast, and uh, just a lot of, they, they really put on a good show here. Oh, they do, and uh, you know, you can see arts and crafts of all different types of styles, mediums, and just see, the, just appreciate the creativity of Mountain View and the Bay Area in general. And as you mentioned, an absolutely perfect day. Well, we've got a number of reporters out in the field today. Two of them are John Vink and Bobby Chastain. Let's check in with them now. It's Bobby here with Robert Steiner. Robert's an artist here at uh, Art and Wine Festival 2010. Art, uh, did you get into, uh, tell us about your art and how you got into doing this specific thing. Well, what I do are paintings of waterfowl primarily for the stamps that go on the state and federal uh, uh, licenses to raise money for wetland. And my work's raised about three million dollars for wetlands uh, all across the country. And I actually read about the competitions to 
have your painting selected on, to be on the stamps way back in 1980. And now I've won 76 state contests and the federal contests. Wow. So have you been doing art like this your whole life? How did you get started and what got you into ducks specifically? Well, I've been painting and drawing my whole life uh, in third grade uh, in elementary school. The teachers told me I had a lot of talent and I started doing little drawings then. And uh, I read about the uh, duck stamp competitions in a magazine article in 1980 and entered the California contest and came in second on my first try. And uh, the next year I won. Now I've won the most of anyone in the country. And what brought you here to Art and Wine in Mountain View? Well, I've actually been doing the uh, Mountain View Art and Wine show for about 15, 20 years. And it's always been a good show. And so you see these on stamps and all that. Is it pretty gratifying to see your work all over the place? I have been very blessed. Well, thanks, Robert, for taking some time with us. And let's take it to our next artist. Hi, I'm John, and I'm here with John Price here at the Mountain View Art and Wine Festival. Now John has a bunch of crystals here and I want him to tell us about it. So I see on the sign here it says you grow crystals. What does that mean? The crystals grow in the molten glaze. They grow at 2100 degrees and take six to eight hours to grow. The glaze was developed in 1850 in France. So in my kiln at 2400 degrees the glaze is molten. It's mainly zinc and silica. Dropping to 2100 degrees, microscopic specks or seeds they form at random. For six to eight hours at exactly 2100 degrees, they draw the minerals from the molten glaze to the seed to grow the crystal, like frost may form on a window. It's the only glaze in ceramics that does something other than melt. It's also fun because of the colors. Now colors, people really don't understand how colors are gotten in ceramics. But in ceramics, when my green cools down to a thousand degrees. I throw sticks soaked to Wesson oil in my kiln and cap. With oxygen, I have copper green. Without oxygen, I now have Chinese copper red. Some of the ways colors are gotten. I have some of the finest cobalt blue I've ever seen in anything. Cobalt isn't always blue. I have cobalt blue, and with no oxygen, I now have cobalt purple. It can be green, pink, or white. Many differences even in the same. How long have you been doing this for? I'm a third generation potter. I've been doing just this glaze for the last 20 years. It's important too because of my homemade high fire kiln. It's like my grandma's from 1945. In ceramics, the higher temperature you fire your pottery, the more they shrink. The more they shrink, the more dense and vitrified they become. So when your pottery shrinks between 15 and 18 percent, its technical term is bone china. It's extremely dense and vitrified. It's not like the other ceramics. Everything is lifetime exchangeable, kept in the same condition. Is this how ancient pottery was made, or is this a totally different mechanism? It was developed in 1850 in France. Ancient pottery was done slightly different, but in France, they happened to fall apart and fall upon this, because back in the time when everything was handmade and not no computers were used, this is how it was discovered. So you don't have a wheel or anything, you actually have a mold that you pour the crystal into and bake it? The crystals grow in the glaze. As far as the porcelain form, I can mold, I can throw, I can slab, I can sculpt, I can make anything. So how many years have you been coming to this Mountain View Art and Wine Festival? This is my third year. And are you locally based? I'm based down in Laguna Beach. And uh, if someone wants to look at more of your arts, where can they go? They can go to a website called crystallineglaze.etsy.com. Etsy is for the handcrafted people to represent themselves. Many fine handcrafted things in there. Great. Thank you very much, John. And... Thanks so much, guys. I'm joined now by the President and CEO of the Mountain View Chamber of Commerce, Oscar Garcia. Oscar, thanks so much for taking time out of your busy day to join us here. Oh, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. We're broadcasting live at the corner of Church and Castro Street for the 39th annual Mountain View Art and Wine Festival. This festival is put on by the Mountain View Chamber of Commerce. I understand its first year was in 1971. How, how did it come about to be? 
Well, you know, it came about because uh, we actually had some of our chamber board members that uh, wanted to do something different in the community, really an opportunity to bring the diverse community of Mountain View together, both in the business, nonprofit, and other volunteers together. And it actually started very small. And as you can see now, uh, in our 39th year, we basically have taken over eight blocks of Castro Street. It is such a big party down here. Oscar, you must be thrilled. I mean, I, the economy certainly isn't in the best of shape, but there are a lot of people out here really taking advantage of this festival today. We are, we are very fortunate. You know, quite frankly, west of the Mississippi, and I mean this honestly, west of the Mississippi, Mount View Art and Wine Festival is one of the top three festivals. Uh, there are nearly 200,000 people that come to this festival, over 600 artists. Uh, we have a lot of nonprofits, uh, almost 700 volunteers that put this event together. Together. And as you can see by the crowds, the beautiful weather, it is truly one of the best uh, festivals uh, west of the Mississippi. Well, I'm glad you mentioned the volunteers because I think anyone who comes to an event like this, it really is so much of the volunteers fueling the atmosphere and it's such a great atmosphere. What can you tell us about this group of people this year? Mountain View is very fortunate to have people that have some big hearts and, um, you know, both from an organizational standpoint, we actually started planning uh, the festival in January. We started reaching out to volunteers. And uh, next Tuesday, we have a volunteer appreciation party. We have volunteers that have actually, this is their 39th year that they've been volunteering at this festival. That is amazing, all 39 years. I have a confession to make. This is my first time here, but I promise you it won't be my last Oscar. Tell us a little bit about what's going on with the Mountain View Chamber of Commerce. Sure. Uh, so the Mountain View uh, Chamber of Commerce, first of all, we are the voice of the business community. But also at the same time, we act as a bridge or as a hub for the community as a whole. We support our local uh, community, local uh, nonprofits, and um, we have just over 500 members. Uh, everything ranging from whether it's a uh, one uh, person uh, business to companies like Google, Microsoft, Intuit, El Camino Hospital, Lucille Packard, a lot of diverse businesses that are part of the Mountain View Chamber of Commerce. I, I've heard of a few of those. I, I may have heard of that Google or uh, Microsoft company. What, what sort of benefits do businesses that partner up with you, what, what, what do they get? Well, depending on the business, uh, if it's a large company, a lot of times uh, they are looking for ways to connect with the community through their corporate philanthropy initiatives, whether it's identifying a, a nonprofit or a cost that matches what their uh, company's uh, giving philosophy is. Uh, if it's a smaller business, they're looking for promote to promote their business, obviously to generate a business. If it's a nonprofit, they're looking for ways to connect with those businesses for grant writing opportunities or to find volunteers. Well, it sounds like you all are doing a great job and, and bringing it back to the festival. This is the, the final day of this two-day event, but there's plenty of daylight left. What, what do you want to say to our viewers who are watching this live in their homes and, and maybe they live as much as a stone's throw away? Well, I just want to tell everyone that, you know, come on down to the festival. We do have maybe about another five hours to go and uh, there's plenty of food, drinks, uh, and a lot of different activities. And of course, let's not forget the artists. Uh, there's some beautiful artwork here. And so please come on down and join us. Absolutely beautiful artwork. Oscar Garcia, President and CEO of Mountain View Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much. Thanks for working so hard to you and everyone at the chamber. And Thank of you. course, all of the volunteers that help make this event happen. Well, we introduce you to two of our reporters. We have two more as well. Out in the crowd today, we have Josh Young, and Christina Hagen, and let's send it over to them. Hi, I'm Christina here down at the Mountain View Art and Wine Festival, and I'm here with Bob from Fiesta Salsa. Hi, how are you, Christina? I'm good, how are you? Good, good. So I saw your booth, I wanted to stop by and say hello, I'm a big fan of salsa. So explain to us a little bit about what you have. Well, this is a very cool product. It's a, it's a dry mix. So it comes in three flavors, and as a dry mix, you use only what you need, and you don't need to to make excess. And as a dry mix, it keeps in your pantry and, and does not go bad in your refrigerator. So it, it's got a shelf life of over a year, and it's very good. What are some of the ingredients in your dry mix? We, we have three flavors, and uh, they feature the, the primary pepper. We have the, the jalapeno, the habanero, and the chipotle. And the ingredients are onion, garlic, cilantro, chili pepper, 
um, uh, cayenne, vinegar, citric acid, and salt. Okay, so you got different, uh, one maybe mild, one maybe medium, one maybe hot, they all the same. And that's the beauty of the dry mix, because you control the dose. So you can make uh, the habanero mild, or medium, or hot. And the same is true with the others. What is your best seller? Our best seller is the original, followed closely by the habanero. Okay, and what are some things that you would make, for example? You know, we love the, the salsa that it makes, but we also love the dry rub aspect, putting it on steak or tri-tip. We've put it in a, a, a chicken a marinade with olive oil as a base. Well, that sounds great. Put it in a bag overnight, and it was dynamite. So wow. delectable. And uh, do you just uh, mainly sell your product at Art & Wine? Do you it's, have a, a website or it, something? It is exclusively at, at Art & Wine shows or weekend events. We do have a website, and we also have an email and our phone number. Oh, that's wonderful. And yeah. did you want to give us your website really quick? I can. Our, our website is, what is it? Is it, is it, is it mysalsafiesta.com? I believe it is. Okay, well, thank you so much. Thank you, and uh -huh. thanks, for, thanks for coming by. Uh-huh. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm here in Mountain New York Wine Festival on the street with... Pat Lloyd from California Bottles. Now, Pat, tell me what you do here. I recycle bottles, and what I do is I find a bottle, melt it down, put the label back on, and then uh, we sell them for wall art, cheese boards, serving plates, all kinds of fun things. Serving plates? Yeah. So you can actually do quite a bit with this. Oh yeah, you can serve sushi on it, cheese. That's an interesting idea. So how do you get it flat? You Slow heat process. We take, um, put them in a kiln, 24 hour process. Very slow up and down. And uh, this is my finished product. These are great. And so how do you get the labels back on there? Uh, that's my secret. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't tell us? No, it's actually a, a take the labels off and then reapply them and we do a resin coating over them to protect them so okay. people can are safe either food safe so people can serve food well, this is a great way to recycle bottles well, i never thanks, thought about this thanks this is our 10th year and we sell at fisherman's wharf in san francisco and this is our sixth year six year at the mountain view art, wine, the festival. Mountain view art and wine festival one of our favorites all right so how much are these bottles um our beers start at ten dollars and then our large ones are 20 or two for 35. What's your favorite kind of bottle to flatten? Oh, I like uh, anything with humor. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving these, uh, the absolute vodka back there, the wine bottles. Yeah, we I'm, do all types of bottles, beer, alcohol, wine, uh, anything the consumer's drinking will melt. Can you use them for like Christmas ornaments? Of course. Of course. <laughs> we have some, come the holidays, we have little mini bottles, airplane size that That's we use for Christmas ornaments. That's great. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for this interview. And you guys should come, get off the couch, come home, get out of here. Come on, come on, come home. Thank the you. Open. The bar is open. <laughs> the bar is open. Come down to the Mountain View and Wine Festival and join us. Thanks. Back here at the corner of Church and Castro at the KMVT booth. And isn't it fitting that we're joined by the executive director of KMVT, this is Brian Sabro. Brian, so great to have you out here today. So great that KMVT is out here today. Well, we're very excited, Kirsten. This is, this is one of the highlights of our year. We cover a lot of events in the community, but, uh, but this is one of our favorites. What is the mission of KMVT? You know, we've had a lot of people coming by the booth, learning more about us. Of course, we have old friends, families, neighbors that have seen their kids or, or been involved in KMVT, but for those who are unfamiliar, let us know what, what the mission is. Sure, sure. We're a community nonprofit. Uh, we cable cast uh, on Channel 15 for uh, Comcast, uh, Monview, Los Altos, and Cupertino. We're also on YouTube. We have a channel on YouTube, so that's exciting. Um, we basically cover uh, not only the three cities, but through the internet, of course, uh, the whole peninsula and, and the world. Uh, most importantly, though, we are kind of an ultra-local Facebook for TV. That's what I like to think of us. We provide opportunity for community members to produce their own shows. We train them. We have a state-of-the-art studio, equipment. Uh, they take a couple of classes, and they produce their own shows. 
Well, I would just think that you would agree with me that when, when you talk about channels like KMVT, you know, we've seen such a cutback of funding in the arts and schools, but what about the adults that still want to get involved in learning filmmaking, learning to how to put on a television show, getting a chance to express themselves creatively, you, I mean, KMVT offers such a service to the community. That's right, Kirsten, we do, and it's, it's really wonderful. We've got about 25 community-produced shows by adults. Uh, we've trained them, and now they produce their own shows, some of them for 20 years. Uh, one of the shows, The Better Part, just produced its 1,000th show, if you could imagine. Congratulations But we to also them. have uh, video training and shows for kids. Uh, we have video camps during the summer and during the winter and spring breaks, and we've trained hundreds of kids, middle school age kids, to produce uh, shows and produce videos. So it's very exciting. That is so very exciting. And, and what's really exciting, I, I think, for the local high school, St. Francis High School, Los Altos, and Mountain View, is the the high school season, the coverage of so many different sports by KMVT. It, it's really such an opportunity for a community to showcase what's best about high school athletics. Well, absolutely, and we're, we're honoring our high school sports heroes. The, uh, the uh, directors and coaches and players will be coming up in some of the interviews. Uh, so KMVT does several different things. We talked about the community produced shows and that's our main mission. But the professional staff also covers high school games and we cover more high school sports in the area than any professional or commercial station or non-profit station. We cover high school sports for St. Francis, Los Altos and uh, Mountain View High Schools. Uh, over a thousand hours of programming, full games, not only on our channels, but also on the internet and on our website. Well, and it was kind of an exciting moment for you earlier today, and uh, maybe we can get a shot of what everyone's so excited about here at KMVT. And boy, what a good looking production truck to go out and shoot some high school sports in. Absolutely, and if, um, yeah, I don't know if the camera's on the truck, but we had the truck, uh, wrapped which is a way of painting it and it looks beautiful if you haven't seen it take a look uh, I, I do want to mention also our professional staff produces videos for the community as well so commercial quality uh, spots and training videos both for uh, nonprofits and for profits and if you'd like to come on down make sure you say come say hi to us at the corner of church and castro street but don't forget to turn out our truck we're, we're in the wells fargo parking lot and you'll see a, a big shiny blue now blue KMVT truck it really is something to behold thank you Kirsten. Brian well I'm gonna keep you right here and ask oh, you good. one more question sure, we, we mentioned that we've been shooting this festival here at KMVT for a number of years but it's not just this I mean KMVT really does get out and about in the community what are some other events that we take part in absolutely we cover um, the Mountain Wine Festival of course but we also cover Oh, four or five major activities uh, coming up the elections for Mountain View and Los Altos. It's that we'll time of year already, it's right? It's that time. We'll have, <laughs> we're going to have live televised debates with call-ins for the city council members. We will be covering various races locally in Los Altos and Mountain View. Uh, we also cover the holiday tree lighting ceremony in December, which is very exciting, and do a number of other events, including covering the LMV um, Leadership Mountain View um, a graduation plus they come to the studio and they do a, an event there so it's it's really a, an honor and a privilege for us to cover a lot of the local events again we're kind of the local ultra local Facebook for the community so uh, any kind of TV media video internet that's where we are and this is really our time of the year kicking it off with high school sports next week Mount, uh, St. Francis lost Gattis football. We'll have that for you. And then, as you mentioned, the elections and tree lighting. Well, you're the big boss. Thanks so much, Brian <laughs> Saba, so the executive sure. director of KMVT. Let's check back in with our reporters, Christina Hagen and Bobby Chastain. One of the favorites every year at Art and Wine is all the great food and drink. We're here at the Kettle Corn booth. Who am, who am I with right now? My name is Brian. And so you've been selling a lot of kettle corn, and how and it's really hot in here. How, what goes into making it? Well, uh, it is really hot in here. It goes up to uh, about 130 degrees in here. But uh, it's a little bit of salt, the sweetness of the sugar, 
and actually the corn. And it's got to have a lot of heat in order to make that perfect. So this is your business. I mean, do you, do you take this on the road everywhere you go? Do you do a lot of festivals? And yes, that sort of thing? I do. This is my, uh, uh, my own business. Yes, I do. And so, uh, you know, you come to Mountain View. Do you come here every year? How, how many times have you done the Mountain View Art and Wine? I've been doing it for the last past 10 years. And they're about to pour it in right now. Do you, do you sell a, just a ton of this stuff? I bet you people can't keep their keep away from it. Oh my God, yes. The sweetness, it just gets the people the addiction in it right in there. And I tell you folks at home, I think you're looking at it right now, this is some fresh kettle corn. If you come out and buy this, it's super hot, super fresh, and super tasty. Uh, how long have you been doing this? I've been doing it for the last past 10 years. And again, kettle corn is fresh, and it's good to at least seven days. So if you get the chance, Haul on out here to Art and Wine, get some kettle corn, get some wine if you're old enough, and listen to the music, and come out, have a good time. And we're back. I'm Christina here at Mountain View Art and Wine Festival 2010, talking with Nelson. Hello, Nelson. How are you doing today? Good. I'm, I'm great. Good. Thank you for uh, taking the time to do an interview with me. So I stopped because I saw all your art, and I just wanted to get some more information about it. How long have you been doing this for? I've been a working artist for about 18 years, and uh, in uh, 2000 I started what's called the Pop Americana series, which is really a celebration of the 20th century and all the icons that you and I grew up with. I see. Now you have many different pieces of work. Is right. there is there a certain piece you do more of than others? Like no, I go from pop surrealist to pop art to humor. Those are the three pretty much uh, major categories. But uh, I don't really constrict myself to one style. I like to just experiment with everything. And uh, I think right now I've got, uh, I stopped counting over a year ago, but I, I've got over a thousand pieces that I've created. Wow, okay, and do you sell most of your stuff at Art & Wines? Do you have your own studio? I have my own studio, but we sell mainly to galleries. I sell to 63 galleries wow. all over the country. And we also sell online. And the reason I do these shows is really to test my product. I create about 30 pieces a year and a great platform to bring these pieces are to these shows so that you can really get a really good feedback as to what people think. If a customer contacted you with a certain picture or something, could you replicate that for them if they wanted to? Do I could, stuff but like I that? don't do commissions. I just don't have time. Okay. The reason I don't have time, obviously, is because I'm on the road, I sell online, and I sell to 63 galleries, so I don't really have time to, to do commissions for anybody. Have you sold to anybody famous, or...? Yeah, I have a lot of celebrity clients. The last big purchase was uh, through Michael Jackson, and that was May of last year. I met Michael at the Beverly Hills Affair in the Gardens, and he purchased three pieces of artwork. And sad story with that is uh, I personally delivered it to his home, on June 15th, and two weeks after that, he, uh, well, you know what happened. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with me. Your work's fantastic. Thank you.